What's up reefers? In today's video, I want to go over everything I think a beginner reef keeper should know about salinity. Uh, first off, I think a good place to start is with testing. Uh, testing, there's a few different ways that reefers use to test the salinity of their water. Uh, the first being a swing arm hydrometer. Um, I'd like to mention right out of the gate that I do not recommend these. Uh, they tend to be very inaccurate. You cannot calibrate them. Uh, I've had three. I had all three side by side. I tested the water in it. All three didn't match, so I threw those away. Um, the next being a refractometer. Uh, you can usually pick them up. They come in a nice case like this. Um, it's good to keep them in the case when not in use because these are sensitive pieces of equipment and by dropping them, knocking them around, they can go out of calibration. Um, you can usually pick one up um, for around $20 or less on eBay or Amazon. Uh, they do make more expensive ones. The higher uh, priced ones tend to stay in calibration longer, um, but I've found the cheap ones actually work really well. You do want to pick up um, some refractometer calibration fluid. This is a fluid that has a known um, salinity of 35 parts per thousand. So you can put it on uh, your refractometer, uh, test it, and if it needs adjusting, it does give you the ability to calibrate. It has a little hole here. You put a small screwdriver in and you're able to uh, bring it up to your known solution. Um, these are pretty simple to use. Um, you flip up the flap, uh, put a few drops of water on it, close the flap, and then you hold it up to the light and you're gonna be able to see inside, um, it's basically a half white and half blue screen, and the blue screen uh, will rise up to the level of your salinity. Um, you can also adjust on the back end if it's a little bit blurry, similar to like a uh, binoculars. You can uh, turn the eyepiece and it does adjust that so you get a clear view from the inside. I always uh, make sure that I keep it clean, keep it in the case, and try to keep it from being bumped around. Um, another great tester, uh, definitely more expensive, um, but a really nice tool to have is the Milwaukee. Uh, this is basically an electronic uh, refractometer. Um, and the way this one works is um, it's got this uh, little part here. It's metal with glass in the middle. Uh, you put a few drops of your water that you're testing on it. Uh, you turn it on, uh, give it a few seconds so that it can register the temperature of the water, and then you're going to just click read. Uh, and within a couple seconds, it's going to give you a reading. It gives reading in PSU, PPT, and specific gravity. Um, these make it very easy. These are easy to calibrate and um, definitely a nice tool to have. Uh, there are a few other salinity testers. I know uh, Hannah makes a decent one. Um, there's also a lot of other brands that make these. Uh, many people even have aquarium controllers that have uh, probes that will give them real-time readings of their salinity. Um, but I think these are the list of the most common um, salinity testers that uh, reefers use. I think the next important item that I want to go over is what goes into making salt water. Um, so the main ingredient, of course, is water. Uh, with water, you want to make sure you're starting with good water. You don't want to use tap water, uh, preferably, and the best option is RODI water. What RODI water is, is uh, filtered water that basically removes all the impurities, any heavy metals, any chloramines, um, and we're able to get water that reads with a zero TDS. Uh, TDS uh, stands for Total Dissolved Solids, and it's basically giving you a reading of what impurities are in the water. Um, so basically what the RODI does is strip the water of anything that you don't want in your tank. Um, not using RO water or RODI water can cause um, you know, problems with nuisance algaes. Um, it can maybe have heavy metals or contaminants that will adversely affect your fish and corals. Um, and it's just not a good practice if you're keeping a reef tank. Um, when it comes to water, there's a few ways that you can get your water. You can um, either purchase and have at your house your own RODI unit where you're making your own water and mixing your own water. Um, but what most entry-level reefers do is they have a local fish store that they're able to go to uh, and buy water. Uh, sometimes this can be cumbersome. You gotta, you know, throw your jugs in the car, uh, jump in the car, drive to the fish store, take your jugs inside the fish store, fill them up. Uh, and you know, you can't go to a fish store without picking up a coral or something. Um, and then bring your water back, unload your water. Um, and then there's two ways of even within that. You can buy just RO water, lug it home, and then still mix your own salt, or you can even buy pre-mixed salt water from your local fish store. Uh, if you are buying your water from your local fish store, there's a few things um, that I would keep an eye out for. Uh, you wanna know what salt they use and what parameters uh, it mixes to. You also wanna know um, that they're using RODI and that they are keeping up on changing their filters. Um, some fish stores, 
you know, tend to go through a lot of water. Uh, they're mixing and filtering a lot of water, so the uh, RO filter can wear out uh, faster than it would in a home setting, and you want to make sure that they're staying on top of it. And any reputable fish store, if you ask them to show you their TDS meter, they will show you what TDS their RO water is mixing at. Um, zero is ideal. Um, if you're at one or two, you, you're probably still okay, um, but I would shoot for zero TDS when you're talking about water. Um, the next I'd like to cover is salt. I think that salt is one of the biggest loaded questions when it comes to reef keeping. Uh, if you jump on YouTube and type in reef keeping salt or something, I'm sure you'll get a hundred different videos with a hundred different opinions. Um, for me, I think what's most important, especially for beginner reefers, as you get more uh, into your journey of the hobby, you know, your opinions of salts might change or might differ for one reason or another. But I think as a beginner, there's two main things that you want to uh, think about. Uh, the first is being you do not want to buy any salt that says for fish only on the bag. Uh, generally, this means it's a lower quality salt. It has more impurities and it could have things in it that would adversely affect uh, inverts and corals. Um, so if it says for fish only and you're keeping a reef tank, stay away from it. Um, the other thing I think is important is to know what the salt mix is at. Um, so whatever your parameters you aim to keep in your tank, you want to buy salt that's right online um, with those same parameters. Um, and with that said, I will be making a series of videos going over all the ideal parameters for a reef tank. So if you're not subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon so you can get notified anytime I upload new videos. So now for all the entry level reefers, you're able to mix your salt, you're able to test your salinity. Um, the next most important thing is how to maintain salinity in your reef tank. Uh, in our reef tanks, the water evaporates. When water evaporates, the water uh, itself uh, does evaporate, but the salt actually stays in your tank. Um, so what happens as your water evaporates, your salinity level slowly rises. Uh, the way to combat that is you add fresh RODI water to top off your tank, bring it back up to the level that it was, and what that does is keep the salinity even. You want to make sure when you're doing, when you're topping off water, you're using RODI water and not salt water. Um, the best way to do this uh, is with the auto top off, or what we refer to as an ATO. What an ATO basically is, is there's sensors uh, in a compartment in your fish tank, is generally in the last compartment of your sump, or if you have an all-in-one, in the last compartment in your all-in-one, and it will uh, keep real-time readings of the water level. Uh, when the water level drops, it's connected to a pump that's in a reservoir of fresh RODI water, generally right next to your tank or under your stand or somewhere near. Uh, it'll pump in fresh RODI water to level out, to keep your uh, level stable, which will in turn keep your uh, salinity stable. Um, when you're doing it by hand, um, you know, people, we're not perfect. We make mistakes. We're not always at the same time, and generally we're doing it once a day, so your salt is slowly rising, 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 and then you top off and it comes back to where it should be and it becomes unstable. Uh, with the ATO, uh, you definitely are able to keep it stable. It reduces the amount of maintenance. Um, in my opinion, I think an ATO is a must on a reef tank. I know a lot of people run successful tanks without it, but it does take uh, more commitment um, and more uh, time filling up and topping off water versus when you have the ATO, you just have to remember to keep your ATO full. I think the next question uh, the beginner reef keepers want to know is what salinity level should I keep my tank? Um, you know, all the internet forums and a lot of the information that's out there suggest 1.025. Uh, the ocean salinity is between 1.025 and 1.027 um, specific gravity or 34 to 36 parts per thousand. Um, personally, I think that 1.025, 1.026 is a good level. I know people will suggest 1.023 to 1.026 is okay. Um, I personally like to keep my tank at 1.026. I feel like this is right in the middle of natural seawater, and that's exactly what we're trying to do, is replicate the environment that these animals come from. So for me, that's the number that I like. Uh, as long as I'm close within that range 1.025, 1.026, I don't stress out too much, but if I am shooting for a number, my number is 1.026. And now, what you've all been waiting for, what salt do I use? Uh, I actually use two kinds of salts, um, and I'll get into a little bit of the reason why. But in the Reef Savvy, um, which is my main tank, this one takes most of my energy. It's the tank that I try to keep all of my levels and parameters as stable as possible. Uh, I use Red Sea Blue Bucket, uh, and I use it for the main reason being that the parameters mix to exactly what I keep my tank at. Um, 
a, a side benefit of using the uh, Red Sea Blue Bucket is it's, it's about a middle of the road salt, I think, and it mixes pretty quick, um, mixes uh, fairly clean. You don't get a lot of crud and uh, brown stuff in your mixing barrels. Um, so I do like the Red Sea Blue Bucket. Um, the one I use for uh, the garage tank, which has a lot of, you know, fish only or low maintenance corals. Um, if I'm growing uh, phytoplankton or I need some salt for, uh, you know, something I use, uh, Instant Ocean. Um, I know this is a, a topic um, with a lot of debate out there and a lot of people will absolutely not use Instant Ocean and there's a lot of people that run beautiful, beautiful tanks and only use Instant Ocean. So don't hold me to it, don't attack me for using Instant Ocean, um, but I do think it's decent salt. I've had good luck with it. It does leave uh, you know, some of the brown crud in the mixing barrels, um, but that's not that big of a deal to me. Uh, so for me, it gets the job done. So I think that's all I have for today. Uh, if you found this video useful, please uh, hit the like button. And as always, happy reefing.